Hello everyone, welcome to episode 14 of our SNAP series. Today we're going to be covering Unit 7 Lab 1 Trees in the BJC curriculum for APCSP. Before we do anything, I want to first apologize for our long hiatus from the series. As seniors in high school, we had to focus on our college applications, and now that we're finished with those, for the most part, uh, we can get back to the series, finish the curriculum, and go back and do anything that we may have left undone. So yeah, let's get started with this lab. Okay, so before we get too far into this lab, let's put a few blocks together to make repeating this lab a lot simpler. What do I mean by this? Well, every time the blocks during this lab draw a tree, well, you're going to have to set the sprite's position back to zero, have it pointing up, uh, have the pen up, so and then clear everything, make sure the pen is down before you restart the drawing. And it's, it's a whole process that you don't want to have to go through every time. So let's automate that. We're going to have the sprite go to x0, y0, but before it does that we want to lift the pen up so that it doesn't put lines everywhere. Well that doesn't really matter at the end of the day because we're going to end up clearing the board anyway, but not before we have the sprite point in direction 0, meaning it'll point straight up. This is so that our trees go up from the ground and not to the left or right or whichever direction the sprite happens to be facing. And then after we clear, we have to remember to put the pen back down so that it can start drawing immediately when we run another command. And we can put this all together with a when flag clicked block. So now whenever we click the green flag, it'll just reset the sprite's position to where we want it to be, which should look something like this. All right, now we can move on. Okay, so the first real blocks you have to create of this lab are tree one and tree two. So this tree 1 block is just a very simple block. All it really does is make the sprite move forward an input number of steps and then make it move backward the same number of steps. So if you run it with like for example a size of 50, it's just going to draw a straight line and which will be slightly darker than a normal straight line because it's going to be moving forward and backward. All right, now if you hit the green flag, it should clear. And then tree 2 is also another block that's given to you. Um, basically what this is going to do is just using a bunch of these tree ones and turning a certain number of degrees to make a branch looking design before moving back to the original starting position uh, at the end of the block. So if we run this one, you see we make this weird branch looking thing, which is basically the basis of what the trees are going to look like. It's just going to be many, many more of these. Alright, so now that we made these two blocks, we can get on to making the other blocks, which is tree 3 and tree 4. Alright, so let's move on to making tree 3. Now, there's probably multiple different ways to do this because obviously you can pick many different degrees for the sprite to turn while drawing the tree. So I'm just going to stick with BJC's example. So it's going to be tree, th oops, tree 3, gonna say consistent, size. Okay, add the size number input. All right, and now we're going to do something very similar to what's in tree two. We're going to have it move size steps. So it's going to move our input number in one direction. Then we're gonna have it turn counterclockwise 25 degrees. And now we're going to use tree two, okay. And we're going to have it move like the multiplication operator. Size multiplied by 0 0.65, just like before. We are then going to have it turn counterclockwise, 60 degrees. We're going to take another tree 2. This time multiplying it by, sorry, multiplying the value of size by 0.85. Then we're going to have it turn 35 degrees counterclockwise and then we will once again finish it off with moving with a multiplication operator to move the negative steps of our input. Alright, so now if we hit apply, we can get our block, make sure to clear the stage. Let's have it make a tree 3 of size 50, and it should look a little something like that. And uh, now we can just very simply make tree 4 using 
tree three as our base. So we can, sorry, make a block. Tree four, size. Have it be a size. Miracle input. Now if we open tree three, we can just duplicate all of these, put it into tree four. But you gotta remember that in tree four, we have to use the tree three custom block instead of tree two. So we can simply right click on tree two, click relabel, and then we can replace it with tree three. Do the same with the other one. And now our tree four block is essentially complete. We just have to apply. And once we clear our stage, we can draw tree four of size 50. And you see it adds another layer of branches. You can basically see what the point of this progression from trees one to four is. It just adds more and more branches and so we can get a more full looking tree, I guess you could say. All right, so now we can move on with the lab. But hold on, we still have to go one more level up. We can make tree five, size, have our size numerical input, and do the same thing we just did. Edit tree four, duplicate all this, and then once again, relabel tree three to tree four. Sorry, I forgot where it was for a second. Hit apply. And now if you make a size 50 tree 5 after clearing the stage, you should get what tree 4 looked like, which was this, with just one more layer of branches, which we do get. And so the rest of this page is just very simple. You just have to make one more block. So we make a block. This time it's a tree that can draw at any level and at any size. And okay, we're gonna have to put a level numerical input as well as a size numerical input. And now we just basically do what we did with the other tree blocks. We edit tree five and just duplicate this and put it here cancel but we have to change some of the degrees around to fit with you know what BGC wants you to have this block be so if we have another counter clock sorry clockwise rotation we can change this to 25 degrees and then the 60 to 35 degrees and then we can finish it with just this bottom uh, no actually we can leave it as 35 degrees all right so we have to remember that since this can draw a tree at any level we have to use the block inside itself. So if we just hit apply real quick, so we can get the updates, so we can have an input in here, we can relabel tree four with tree level. Relabel tree level, okay. But tree level works a little differently. So we're gonna have to change this way of formatting these variables. So. If we take out size, we can put level, and, ooh, wait, that's the wrong operator. We need to use a subtraction reporter. Okay, so we put level, minus one, and then we can use size, times 0 0.6 foot, 0 0.65. And then we basically just have this exact same thing for this one, except if we move the size times 0 0.85 to the size section, we can just duplicate this level minus one and put it into the level input. Now if you hit apply, okay, we can now test this. So the first way we can see if our new block works is if we take a look at tree five, we still have drawn here, we can try to draw a tree of level five with a size of 50. And we're going to see if this produces essentially the same output as what our previous um, tree five with a size of 50. Uh, resulted in. So if we clear our stage and we run this, ah, but you see here, there's a problem with this block, and that's that it calls itself within itself because it is a recursive block. And occasionally you can have issues such as this, where the block calls on itself and it gets stuck in an infinite loop where it just keeps drawing 
while attempting to draw something incredibly small, and so it'll never actually get to finish the entire tree. But that's okay, you were expected to get an infinite loop, but now we're tasked to help remedy this situation. So if we go back into our block, you can see where the problem arises. It's because of this recursion right here and here, of course. It's because the level just keeps going down without any bounds as to how low it can go. And so it'll just keep going lower and lower infinitely. So it'll never actually finish its original drawing, like I just said previously. So one way to fix this, we go into the control tab, we can get an if block and put our recursion within it. Do that for both instances right here. But now, what do we put as the condition? Well, if we go to the operators, we can take a greater than or less than. I'm going to take, let's see if size is, sorry, if level, I'll take a greater than. So if we use if level is greater than. Uh, let's keep it at zero. If level is greater than zero, then it'll execute this. So that way, it doesn't just keep going lower and lower, and so we'll finally get a finished result. So if we do that again, level greater than zero, hit apply, and let's use BJC's, sorry, BJC's example. Let's make a tree with level nine levels and a size of 50. Close the stage. We run this, you see we can actually get a full tree drawing since it's not infinitely looping on itself anymore. That's a lovely tree. Okay, so now on the last page, the first thing they have you do is to experiment changing the tree in different ways. First way to suggest is changing the turn angle. So the way you can do this is simply, for example, if we see in our tree level block how we have turn right 35 degrees. We have that here, and then on the bottom we have turn left 35 degrees. You can change the turn angle just by having a block like this, taking a plus operator and just having level plus 35. So now every time it recurses at a different level, the angle is going to be slightly different. You could just take this block and replace this with it and then take a counterclockwise rotation of the same block and put that here. So that's an example of how you can do that. Then to change the scale factor, something you can do is just make a variable block where you can set size to size times 1.5. This is just going to take the size you already put in the block and just expand it, thus changing the scale factor of the tree. And then lastly, to change the number of branches at each level, you just have to take another one of these if levels greater than zero, draw the tree, and just put it right under the final turn. See, this is just going to draw another branch of the tree. In fact, I have it over here. If we have a tree level, oops, it's supposed to be tree level three. If we have a tree level three size 50 with this exact layout we have here, it's going to draw the 25 degree branch and the 35 degree branch, but it's also gonna draw a zero degree branch in the middle because we didn't really specify a turn angle. So it's going to do this for every single layer. And so every single layer of the tree is gonna have three branches rather than two. And the next thing this page has you do is to change the thickness of each branch as the tree gets higher and higher. What you can do here is you can take a set pen size to block from the pen tab, it's right here, and you could put the level input in there. And now if we put this into our block, our tree level block, and we hit apply and okay, clear this, you can see that if we draw a tree that's relatively big, let's say size 5, you can see that the ends of the branches are a lot thinner than the trunk it's because the level is getting smaller and smaller as these blocks recurs and so that means that the pen size is being set smaller and smaller. And now the last thing this page has you do is to make it so that the leaves of the tree are green and that the trunk is brown. You could do this with this if else block here. If we have it so that the branch thickness changes as the tree gets bigger and we take this and put it here now while if the level is less than three the pen color will be set to green you can change this value I'm just gonna leave it at three for now because three you get a relatively large amount of green branches in the final tree and uh, if it's not less than three 
the pen color will be brown. So if we apply an OK, we can see this in action. If we create a tree of size 50 with level 7, you can see that only the tips of the branches are green and the rest of the tree is brown. So it's closer to an actual tree. And that's basically all that Unit 7 Lab 1 Trees has you do. So what have we learned here? We learned how we can use recursion in our algorithms to make more complex designs. And in the next lab, Unit 7 Lab 2 Recursion Projects, we're going to find out how we can use recursion to make complex designs such as fractals. Uh, we'll see you next time and good luck on your academic endeavors.